Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, September 14th and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable, seroundtable.com over the past week. First up, there seemed to be a Google update uh, around September 11th or so, maybe kicking off a little bit around September 10th as well. Um, there was some chatter around this. It didn't seem to be as much as the Medic update um, from the past. There was some muscle chatter last week around, and then also August 22nd around some Google updates, but this one seems to have more chatter than the previous couple updates that were not confirmed. Um, the tools are all going nuts around this. They still, some have calmed down, some are still high, uh, but there definitely did seem to be some type of Google update uh, around September 11th. It's unclear if it's kind of a reversal or change to the medic update. Um, it's just really unclear as to what exactly that is. So um, I guess, um, I guess we'll see what happens over time, but I really do believe that the uh, update has somewhat died down since uh, I covered it then. Um, what's interesting is that Google actually broke. If you did a search for a specific query, compare the market, um, Google would actually return nothing. Um, it would give a server error. <laughs> I did the try that last night. It started around 3, 3.30 or so um, yesterday uh, afternoon, Eastern time, and then around 3 o'clock this morning, I believe, it started to work again. It's unclear what happened. Um, Google was definitely aware of it, but it still took a really long time for Google to fix it, um, and Google did not tell us why it happened. <coughs> Another bug, potentially a glitch, Google called it, was that Google was testing zero results again, or maybe it was part of this other bug, where Google would actually show this, their answers around Hurricane Florence, which is going on right now, and I hope everybody who's in those regions are safe, um, and everybody stays safe, and, and their, any property and stuff get, you know, is not damaged, and you guys get through this. Um, but um, you can see here, is, it's just the answers. There's no actual search results below it, um, whereas this is what I saw with search results, the you know, top stories and the search results below it and so forth. You don't get that here. And the person who reported this does a, finds a lot of Google tests, and this was a, a real Google test, but Google said it was a glitch and wasn't meant to be. Um, this brings us back to March when Google was testing, showing zero results and no search results. And Google quickly stopped that test after about a week or so. Um, Google Canada is caught buying a link, uh, a nonprofit link. Um, Tad found it. It's basically on the openmedia.org website where Google donated $20,000, I believe, or something like that, towards um, this nonprofit and Google... That link is a non-known followed that's google.ca link. Um, and then I actually referenced a recent video from Google's John Mueller about how links like these, you probably don't need to you know, follow unless you see a pattern where um, they're buying these links just to manipulate Google, but one-off links here and there for charity, which is not intended for going ahead and manipulating Google, and Google's not probably trying to manipulate themselves, especially for ranking for Google. Um, um, that's okay, he said. And um, anyway, go back to the history. Obviously, Google, uh, you know, has penalized themselves over the years around donating links um, or doing things against, or buying links or doing things against their guidelines. Uh, but they haven't done so in a long time, even after being caught a couple times around nonprofit links, which were obviously unintentional. Um, Google's John Mueller said they're looking into handle handling how GDPR blocking. Um, is affecting search results, especially for EU citizens. So what happens is, when you do a search in Google, um, what here's a screenshot so you can see it. You do a search for, in Google, and you go to a, you see a store, and you click on it, and you're in the EU, and that site is blocking EU users, you're going to get nothing. You're going to get one of these pages or one of these pages. Sorry, you're not available from the Chicago Tribune. And the issue is that Google's crawling from the U.S. And obviously U.S. users are not blocked because of GDPR, but some, EU, uh, some websites are blocking EU users because of GDPR. And Google's not able to detect that so well. So Google's actually setting, saying that they, are, they know it's a bad user experience and it's something we've been looking into to find a solution for. Um, what that solution might be is probably remove it from the EU results um, if EU users can't see it, but we'll see what Google comes up with um, if they ever do come up with anything. Obviously, like you know, Google Chrome 69 has come out. We talked about it a little bit last week, um, but there's some SEO annoyances around that. So um, you can see one is the it's hiding the actual head, heading part, the the protocol part. So you don't know if it's HTTP or HTTPS. There's obviously a lock there, so it's probably HTTPS. You don't know if it's www versus non-www, so you're missing the whole canonical aspect. 
Um, and people are upset about that. I hear rumors that it's going to come back. The only way to get to it is actually click on it twice and bring up the URL. And I heard rumors that that's actually going to come back soon. Uh, the Omnibox one answer, so you actually start typing. It actually gives you answers. It's now on by default. It used to be a feature you had to turn on. Um, and HTTPS is no longer green. It's just a normal lock, and eventually it's just going to be no lock at all. Um, so that's um, that's what's going on with Chrome 69 and related to SEO. Again, no real SEO benefit or whatever. It's just annoyances for SEOs. Google said sometimes they show the original date of the URL or content published um, article or whatever might be published, and sometimes they show the last modified date. Uh, he said, John Mueller said, if the content has changed substantially, they'll often show the last modified date of that piece of content as opposed to the original date. Uh, otherwise, they try to show the original date, he said in a video. Uh, Google also said that we should try to keep your page load time, just not from a user perspective, from a crawling and perspective to, 100, to, to a few hundred milliseconds or so or less. Um, so John Mueller said, we don't have any hard guidelines on this, but anecdotally I see sites with a few hundred millisecond time to fetch resources, some less than 100 milliseconds, and other sites with way over. Faster usually lets us crawl more, so we need it to so show exa exactly. So you basically want to go ahead and uh, make your pages as fast as possible, uh, for obviously for users, but also for crawling, so Google will a crawl more and so forth. Google says it doesn't really matter where your XML sitemap is located, uh, but it depends. He said, um, it depends on how the sitemaps were first discovered. He said, if a sitemap via anonymous ping, they're only valid and the lower at valid there in the lower level. So if it's done via ping, um, it's only valid at the current location is and the lower levels. Whereas if you submit it via sitemap for your search console, it could be any part of the site. It could be anywhere and Google will, will go expand upon that. So just keep that in mind when you're placing your XML sitemap somewhere. Google said, no, we don't support you being able to check millions and millions of domain names to see if there's any manual actions, specifically around link penalties, because you want to go ahead and redirect millions of domain names to a specific website to try to get some link equity and so, so forth. We're not supporting that in Search Console. You're not going to go ahead and be able to quickly search across millions of domains in our API to go ahead and see that. And it's a pretty funny uh, conversation that has gone there, and I document that over there. Google My Business added the ability to show um, and enter localized versions of the name, especially for international reasons. So here's McDonald's, both in English and in Russian. Um, the only way to get to it is if you edit the, thing, the Google My Business listing in web search, not in Google My Business uh, uh, dashboard. Um, their stats, uh, a company called Stats released a report saying that basically um, the number of images, uh, search results with images is up uh, almost 65% from about 50%, um, which is about 65% of the top 100 results show an image result uh, carousel or something around image search. Um, Google released some data around the Google Assistant showing you, based on the time of day, how Google Assistant on Android versus Google Assistant on Google Home is different. Um, it's pretty cool if you look at the data. Let me just expand that a little bit so you can see it. Uh, so you can see here um, that on Android, you can see things like local and communications are done around, you know, trying to do around like 6 p.m. dinner time, whereas productivity is earlier on in, in the day. Um, it goes up, you know, around there. Whereas Google Home, it's more about morning, getting the news and weather, and then at the end, getting uh, news, not so much weather and so forth. So it's pretty cool to see how searchers use Google Assistant differently across Android and Google Home devices. Um, Google is testing related image hoverover feature. So instead of showing related images box, they're actually showing this little hoverover. Um, we actually do a search, and then this little thing hovers over and shows you some related images, which I guess you click on or X out. It looks kind of weird. I don't like it. Um, Google is also testing a new video search box. Um, let me just quickly show you that. So as you can see here, um, instead of it just being a carousel, which is what this is over here, just a carousel, um, when you actually go ahead and look at it, it shows a primary video and then sub videos with a link over here to see more. And when you click that, it expands to show a lot more videos. So that's pretty cool. Um, and Google's also testing on the ad side 
showing just the headline and the URL without the description, without the ad copy of the ad. Um, and this is being tested specifically in the three ad slot um, in the mobile search results. So this is what it looks like, just ad headline and URL, no actual description. And finally, uh, for those AdWords advertisers out there, the ad, or Google Ads advertisers, AdWords editor version 12.5 is out with a bunch of new features. Um, so definitely take a look at that if you are using AdWords editor. It's been out for a couple weeks now, so definitely take a look at that. Any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. Um, and again, today is Friday, September 14th. Everyone have a great weekend. For anybody, um, uh, Anybody observing Yom Kippur, easy and healthy and safe fast. And I'll see you guys uh, next Friday. Everyone have a great weekend. I'll see you then. Bye.